So magandang umaga po sa ating lahat Good morning to everybody And uh, as we start our uh, Sunday service I'd like to just read a passage in the Bible In Psalm 121 It says, I lift up my eyes to the hills Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot sleep. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. So this we see a song of ascent by a psalmist in the Old Testament proclaiming that indeed God who is our maker and the maker of the heavens and the earth watches over his people, watches over his children. And we have seen this in the life of the Israelites that he has been the uh, cloud uh, by day, okay? A pillar of cloud by day and a, pil a pillar of fire by night. That is how the Lord shows his uh, uh, protection over the nation of Israel. And so if you are a believer in Christ, the Lord indeed watches over your life. Now, this does not mean that we will not meet any accidents anymore, that we will not die or we will not uh, have any injuries whatsoever. That is not this, uh, that is not the interpretation of this, but rather our God who watches over our soul, which is more important than our just but living here on earth. Why precisely? Because after this life, we still have a life that we will enjoy together with the presence of God. At marami mga tao hindi nakakaalam nito. Ako mismo hindi ko alam ito nung ako'y uh, nagumpisa hanggang sa ako'y dinala ng Panginoon sa abroad at doon lang napasama ko sa mga ganitong klase ng fellowship at doon ko lang naintindihan na akala ko ako'y may religion na that is more than enough, I attend, I I do all the uh, rituals and everything. Hindi para ganon. So meaning to say, we need to have a true understanding of the gospel. And uh, hopefully, Pastor Jay will uh, uh, dwell on that later in the preaching as well. And uh, I pray that uh, today uh, we rejoice as a family. We rejoice as a church precisely because God is here. God is present in the midst of his people. And so let us now come and worship the Lord together. Amen? Amen. So wala si Noel, so Brother Jay, sasabihin ko sana, Pastor AJ. Sabi pa yun 
Take na, na, take na. Uh, let us all stand and let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, you are our Lord and God. You, Lord, are deserving and worthy of our praise and adoration. We come, O Lord, before you in repentance of our sins. Please forgive us, our God. Also, Lord, we pray, Lord God, that you may bless us with the Holy Spirit. Help us understand the word we are about to receive today. We also pray for our pastors and all the different Christian pastors today that will be preaching your word, that you may sustain them and help them, Lord God, as they, as you use them, Lord God, as your mouthpiece. Be glorified above all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Let us remain standing and open our songbooks to page number four. <clears throat> We shall sing our first song, It Is Well With My Soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows songbooks to page number two and we shall sing He Will Hold Me Fast. When 
When I fear my fate will fail, Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter would prevail, He will hold me fast. I could never keep my hold through life's fearful path, for my love is soft and cold. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast. For my Savior loves me so. He will hold me fast. Those sea saves are still alive. Christ will hold me fast, precious in His holy sight, He will hold me fast. He'll not let my soul be lost, His promises shall last, bought by Him at such a cost. will hold me fast. Justice has been satisfied. He will hold me fast. Race with him through endless life. He will hold me fast till our fate is turned to side. When he comes alive. Ipoy manatiling na katayo, and I call on Bro Pete to lead us with our scripture reading. mga pati, magandang maga. Atin pong buksa na ating mga aklat sa Ikadalawampu't walong aklat ni Mateo. Mateo. Matthew. 28. Kung kayo po ay nandun na, sabay-sabay po tayong magbasa. After the Sabbath, At dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him, They shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead. of you into Galilee. 
There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, it will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Praise God. <clears throat> Magandang umaga ho sa bawat isa Isang makulimlim na umaga uh, Ngunit uh, tayo po papasalamat sa Panginoon Na tayo po ay kanyang dinako sa iglesyang ito Upang samasamang magpuri sumamba sa ating dakilang Diyos At uh, today also Uh, mayroon, after lunch, uh, mayroon tayong baptism at dalawa po sa ating mga kapatiran ay handang uh, magpasakop sa uh, tubig ng, o sa bautismo. Uh, so mamaya, uh, sana lahat po tayo after this, after ng lunch ay walang aalis at uh, tayo po pupunta sa church ni Pastor Del. Anyway, may mga sasakyan naman yung mga kapatiran natin. So makisakay tayo yung walang mga sasakyan kagaya ko. So, uh, maki-witness tayo, makigalak na muli ang Diyos ay patuloy na uh, ating nakikita ang pagkilos niya sa buhay natin at sa iglesyang ito. Na uh, siya uh, lamang at end of the day ang tumatawag sa mga makasalanan. Siya ang uh, nagbubukas ng puso, hindi tayo. Ang ating karapatan ay, o yung ating task rather ay mangaral ng salita ng Diyos. Pero kahit gaano kagaling ng isang preacher o gaano kasimple ang kanyang pangangaral, kung wala ang pagkilos ng banal na espiritu, kung walang udyok ng, ng kilos ng triune God, ng Diyos Ama at ng Diyos Anak at ng Diyos Espiritu, ay wala tayong magagawa. Ngunit ang Diyos Dahil nangako siya na tayo ay kanyang inutusan upang ipangaral ang salita ng Diyos, ang mabuting balita, and uh, kaakibat niyan ay yung bunga, yung resulta na mayroon talagang maliligtas at yun na nga na mamaya ay uh, mayroon tayong babautismuhan. At sa katunayan, tayo rin ang mga mananampalataya ay binago ng Diyos, tinawag ng Diyos mula sa kadiliman, 
tungo sa liwanag at dahil lamang sa Ebanghelyo ni Jesus. So tayo po'y manalangin. <clears throat> Kilang Diyos, kami po'y napapasalamat muli sa oras na ito. We thank you for allowing us to gather together, O Lord, as a church, in order to worship your holy name. Thank you for uh, giving us this wonderful day and thank you for your blessing and your protection for the whole week, O Lord. Salamat sa iyong biyaya, provision sa amin bilang iglesia. At salamat sa inyong salita na siyang aming kalakasan at narito kami uh, nagsama-sama upang purihin kayo at sambahin. At ang sentro ng aming panambahan ay ang pangangaral ng iyong salita. Kaya hinihiling namin ang pagkilos ng iyong bala na espiritu. Tulungan niyo po kami, bigyan niyo po kami ng uh, karunungan, maunawaan ito at maging ang iyong likod. Ito po aming dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. So kanina po, uh, pansamantala nating pinutol yung ating scripture reading. Supposedly, tayo po ay nasa uh, 1 Peter. Uh, ngunit uh, for this uh, special day or Sunday, ay dahil nga meron tayong baptism uh, this afternoon, uh, bibigyan natin ng diin itong sinabi ng mismo ng ating Panginoong Isus, ang or what we call the Great Commission sa Matthew chapter 28, particularly sa verses 16 to 20. Yan po ang uh, focus ng ating pag-aaral this morning. Now, babasahin ko ulit sa inyo sa verse 16 hanggang sa 20. Verse 16, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw Him, They worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to ob obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Praise God for His Word. Dito po sa Matthew 28, sa ating binasa, sa verses 16 to 20, uh, based on Christ's authority and His promised presence, we are to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to observe Jesus' commands. So ito mismo yung Great Commission ng ating Panginoong Jesus, no less than Jesus himself given this command. Now, in this final passage in Matthew's Gospel, we come to what has been called the Great Commission. A commission given by the Lord Jesus Christ to those uh, early disciples and to all his followers in subsequent generations. So not just on the first century, sa 12 disciples ng ating Panginoong Jesus, but even sa 21st century and maging sa hinaharap sa lahat ng mga tagasunod ng ating Panginoong Isus. And here Matthew ends by telling, uh, by telling us how Jesus sent out His disciples to proclaim Jesus as King to the ends of the earth. And that is a story that continues even today. And pansinin niyo po rito sa ating binasa, meron lamang isang imperative o command dito hindi yung baptizing, yung teaching, uh, yung tatlong participle, yun po ay auxiliary verbs. Kumbaga, yan ay supporting cast lang doon sa main uh, verb which is yung make disciples. So ang make disciples, yun yung imperative, yun yung command. Go and make disciples. So make disciples, yung going, baptizing, and teaching lahat yun ay participles and yun ay sumusuporta doon sa make disciples. Ito yung task ng church to make disciples. Bawat iglesia, bawat mananampalataya, ang ating goal ay magkaroon ng disciple. Not disciple of Pastor Jay or disciple of Pastor Mike, but the disciple of Jesus Christ. Tayo ay inatasan upang i-disciple natin sila, turuan natin sila tungkol sa ating Panginoong Isus. Uh, in other words, you share the gospel, you proclaim the gospel 
upang maunawa nilang ibanghelyo tungkol sa ating Panginoong Isus na sila'y sumampalataya kay Hesu Kristo na siyang tagapagligtas ng bawat makasalanan. At ito yung task ng Iglesia. And malungkot na sa panahon natin, maraming mga iba't ibang mga estratehiya, teknik, mga mga iba't ibang kaparaanan, iba't ibang mga seminar just to uh, formulate kung ano yung tamang approach pagdating sa pagpadami ng iglesia. Ngunit sa New Testament, particularly sa turo ng ating Painong Yesus, mayroon lamang isang command na binigay ang ating Painong Yesus sa loob ng iglesia to make disciples. At yan po ang ating pag-igihin, ating, uh, uh, ating dapat magampanan bilang iglesia at uh, sa iglesia sa pangkalahatan. And sa under ng make disciples ay narito yung going, yung baptizing, and teaching. Yan ang ginagawa ng iglesia. Tayo ay uh, humahayo, tayo nagtuturo, nangangaral, at doon sa mga sumasampalataya, doon sa mga disciple na sa, ng ating Painong Iso Kristo ay ating binabautismuhan. At yan po ang ating gagawin this afternoon. Ngunit uh, in the meantime, titingnan natin itong passage na ito. Here, ang scope is all nations. So hindi lamang sa bansang Israel, sa Jerusalem, kundi sa pinakasulok pinaka ng daigdig. Yun ang gusto mangyari ng ating Painong Isus na mapuntahan ng mga disipulo, maipahayag, maipangaral ang mabuting balita. And this is the blessings promised to Abraham and through him to all peoples on earth are now to be fulfilled in Jesus the Messiah. So dumating na ang katuparan ng pangako ng Diyos sa katauhan ni Jesus na siya yung true seed of Abraham. Siya yung nagtupad ng pangako ng Diyos sa lumang tipan kung saan ang bansang Israel hindi nakatupad, bumagsak sa kasalanan and they became idolate, idolaters. Sila'y sumamba sa mga Diyos-Diyosan. But here, the Lord Jesus came and the purpose of coming the coming of Jesus is to fulfill to obey to submit to the will of his father eh laging sinasabi ni Jesus na parito ako upang sundin to parin ang kalooban ng Ama ko sa langit so yan ang ginawa ng Panginoong Jesus at unang si Jesus na matay sa krus at muli na buhay then sa sa mga huling yugto siya nagpahayag nagpakita sa mga disipulo at binigyan niya ng mga tagubilin at ito po yung tas ng ng iglesia ng bawat mananampalataya so baptizing and teaching here are not the means of making disciples but they characterize it at yan po ang ginagawa natin and envisage is that proclamation of the gospel that will result in repentance and faith. So yan po ang ginagawa ng iglesia. Pinapahayag natin yung ibanghelyo. Dapat maging malinaw sa atin ang ibanghelyo, ang salita ng Diyos. Dahil at the end of the day, ang itatanong sa iyo, ikaw ba isang mananampalataya? Hindi itatanungin sa iyo, please define to me what is regeneration? What is five solas? Hindi ko kailangan ma- kahit kahit articulate ka sa punto na yon, but my simple question is, do you believe in Jesus? Are you His disciples? Are you following Jesus Christ? That is a simple question. Ang question na kung saan ay kinu-question yung iyong sarili. Am I a true believer? A genuine Christian? So yan po ang mga dapat itatanong and uh, base sa ating mga karanasan bilang mananampalataya, tayo ay sumampalataya, tayo ay nagpasakop sa pagkapanginoon ni Hesus Kristo. And uh, this afternoon, yung ating dalawang mga candidate na magpabautismo, sila ay sumuko na sa ating Panginoong Hesus. Sila ay sumampalataya na, sila ay kumilala na sila ay mga makasalanan. Sila ay nagsisi na sa kanila mga kasalanan. Hindi ibig sabihin na pagka nagsisi ka na ay hindi ka na nagkakasala at ayaw mo na hindi ka na nagsisisi sa iyong kasalanan. Simula nung ikay uh, nagsisi na hanggang ngayon, hindi ka na nagsisisi. Eh, hindi po yun. Ang ibig sabihin yan, lifestyle, yung, is, yung repentance sa buhay ng isang mananampalataya, 
But at the moment of conversion, there is a genuine turning away of sin. There is what we call a genuine repentance and faith sa ating Panginoong Isus. So yan po ang makikita natin ay napakarami mga passages sa New Testament. We don't have time na tingnan lahat ng yun. Ngunit bibigyan lang natin diin yung mga ilang talata sa scripture, particularly dito sa ating binasa tungkol sa baptism. So here, baptism symbolizes identification with the person of Christ and inclusion in the body of Christ. So uh, ulitin ko, identification and inclusion. Ibig sabihin, yung identification, you identify yourself with Jesus Christ. You are now united with Him, our union with Christ. So yun yung identification with Christ. Pag sinasabi natin inclusion, inclusion to the body of Christ, which is the local church, sa iglesia ng ating Panginoong Isus. Paano ka magiging kasapi sa iglesia? So the first entry is baptism. Ibig sabihin, uh, grant, granting that you already a believer, now paano ka maging useful at mag- magkabilang sa iglesia, then you submit to uh, the mode of baptism. At yan pong ginagawa na, gagawin natin uh, this afternoon. So here, the inclusion in the body of Christ, it is the initiation right in the Christian church. At yan pong ginagawa ng mga Uh, mga mananampalataya noong first century hanggang sa panahon natin. That's why baptism signifies our union with Christ. O yun ang sinabi ko kanina. For example, sa Romans chapter 6 verse, verses 3 to 6. Romans chapter 6. Paul says verse 3. <clears throat> Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ, the word into, into Christ, meaning our identification with Jesus, into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death. We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So, yun yung identification natin sa ating Panginoong Isus. Kagay ni Isus na matay sa krus. Yung kanang kamatayan sa krus dahil siya lumagay sa katayuan ng mga makasalanan. He identified himself with the sinners. Yun ang sabi sa 2 Corinthians 5.21. Bagamat hindi siya nagkasala. And then he died on the cross. Pero nung kasunod noon, siya nabuhay mula sa libingan. So, from death to resurrection. At yan po ang symbolism ng baptism. Tayo ay muling namatay sa kasalanan at tayo ngayon ay ibinuhay kasama ng ating Panginoong Isus. Hindi na tayo ilalim sa pagkaalipin ng kasalanan dahil ginapina ni Jesus. Hindi na tayo, we are no longer under the dominion of sin, the control of sin. Bagamat we can we are still sinners, But hindi yung characterized by sin. We are no longer identified as drunkards. We are no, no longer identified as immorals or thieves. We are Christians. We are renewed, transformed, restored. Yan ang description ng isang mananampalataya bilang tayo identified ng ating Panginoong Isus. Ganun din sa Galatians 3.27 For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. See that? Our identity with Him, our union with Christ. In other words, we are incorporated with Christ. So here, baptizing implies Also, repentance and forgiveness as well as inclusion in God's family. So, in other words, sa mga Kristiyano, sa mga mananampalataya, tayo ay pinatawad na sa ating mga kasalanan. Tayo ay nagsisi na sa ating mga kasalanan. Tayo ay nagpasakop na sa ating Panginoong Jesus. He is our Lord. Our identity is 
no longer sa atin, kundi we now belong to our Lord Jesus, to our Savior Jesus Christ. Also here sa Hebrews 10.22, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. So yung water symbolizes cleansing, cleansing from sin. Tayo nilinis na ng ating Panginoong Jesus dahil sa ginawa ng Panginoong Iso Kristo. Hindi ito physical washing of the body that took place in baptism, baptism but symbolizes the cleansing of the heart. Tayo, ibig sabihin, we are renewed, renewed. we are transformed. And sa ating lingwahi, born again, regenerated, tayo binago na ng Diyos. Yan po ang ibig sabihin yan. In short, baptism is associated with repentance and forgiveness of sins. Conversion to Christ necessarily involved in incorporation into a Christian community, the church. So because we are repentant, we submitted to the Lordship of Christ, we are now forgiven, cleansed, transformed. Ano ngayon? Tayo dapat maging kabilang sa iglesia ng Panginoon. And by His providence, tayo ay uh, dinala dito sa iglesia ito, Redeemer's Christian Church. Hindi to accident. Hindi to by chance. Uh, yun ang term na ginagamit ang ilan but for us as believers providence ito ay providensya ng Diyos ng Diyos sa mga ordinary days sa buhay natin siya ay kumikilos hindi natin nalalaman na tayo pala ay pinagsama-sama ng Diyos pinagsama-sama yung iba't ibang mga strata sa buhay may professional, may hindi uh, mayroong mga bata mayroong mga matanda at pinagsama-sama iba't ibang personalidad but what binds us together is our union with Christ tayo ay iisa na sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo so here ang application nito sa mga mananampalataya na at maging sa mga nakikinig sa Facebook kung kayo mga mananampalataya na at hindi pa kayo nagpapabautismo if you are a follower of Christ and have not been baptized you are living in direct disobedience to Christ. You know why? Yun ang command ng ating Panginoong Isus. To neglect baptism is to dishonor and to, dis- and to disobey Him. And the New Testament knows nothing of unbaptized Christians. So lahat ng mga kabilang sa iglesia, sila ay mga binautismuhan na. Kabilang na sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. So here, the rite of baptism is designed for believers. So hindi natin binabautismuhan yung hindi pa mananampalataya. Dahil ang baptism, yun yung unang step ng isang mananampalataya na na handa siyang magpasakop, handa siyang sumunod sa ating Panginoong Isus para kang pumasok sa gusto mo na mag-asawa. At engage na kayo ng iyong kapartner. And then sa araw ng kasal, haharap ka doon sa mga witness. In public, hindi secret yung marriage. In public, sasabihin mo, okay, ako ay tali na, natatali na sa babaeng yan. Ako ay uh, ikakasal na. And kamatayan lang ang makapaghihiwalay sa amin. And in the same manner sa baptism, Humaharap ka in public at sinasabi mo, ako ay handa ng susunod sa aking Panginoong Isus. Sa hirap man o sa maginhawa. Sa unos sa mga mabigat mang mapagdadaanan ko, sa hinaharap, ako ay handang susunod sa aking Panginoon, sa aking Master. Kaya ang isang mananampalataya, First and foremost, ang tinatanong natin, you are not a disciple of your pastor. You are the disciple of the Lord Jesus. Kami ay binigyan na ng otoridad 
ng Panginoong Isus o pang pangunahan ng iglesia. Hindi kami ang sentro rito kundi ang Panginoong Isus. And if you disobey our teaching, you disobey Christ. Because here, we just follow the footsteps of the Lord Jesus. Kami ay sumusunod lamang sa utos ng ating Panginoong Isus. May mga iglesia na tinitake for granted yung baptism. Ah, okay lang, basta masaya tayo, okay lang yun. Hindi yun ang kaluban ng Diyos. Ang, hindi yun ang kaluban ng Diyos na tayo maging masaya lang. Dahil hindi lahat ng panahon ay lagi tayong masaya. Hindi lahat ng panahon si sino yung napakamatay, si Williams, ay nagpapatawa. Hanggang dumating sa punto siya yung napakamatay, meron pala siyang depression na pinagdadaanan. Si hindi lahat ng Kristiyano ay laging masaya. Ngunit kahit man sa mahirap na pangyayari sa buhay, because you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and there is peace that you are no longer under His wrath, there is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, you are now forgiven, cleansed, justified, and time will come when Christ appears. Siya'y babalik kay kabilang kabahagi, isama ng ating Panginoong Isus. At ngayon pa lang nararanasan mo na ang buhay na walang hanggan. But the fullness of our salvation is still yet at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But now, the first blessing of salvation is the Holy Spirit. We are now forgiven. We are now justified. We are now sanctified. Nararanasan na ng isang mananampalataya because of what the Lord Jesus has done on the cross. At yan po ang makikita natin sa New Testament. And that's why, sa unang step mo, kaanda akong susunod sa aking Panginoong Isus. No matter what, kahit na may mamatay sa iyong pamilya, kahit na kayo magkasakit ng cancer, you cannot question the wisdom of, the wisdom of God. Dahil lang ngayon ang pinapangaral, karamihan sa pulpit ay blessings, prosperity gospel. But the prosperity gospel yung walang walang sakit, walang karamdaman, mararanasan mo lamang yan sa new heaven and new earth. Sa kasalukuyan, mararanasan natin ang iba't ibang uri ng karamdaman. Ngunit one thing for sure, you are no longer under God's wrath. You are no longer under God's judgment. You are now His children. At yan po ang makikita natin sa New Testament. That's why theologically water baptism presupposes spiritual regeneration. Tayo binago na ng Diyos. Tayo born again na. These are people who repented and are then baptized into the into the fellowship of a church. And so here to be a church member is to be one of the individuals who constitute a church. Kaya tayo na mga binago ng Diyos, tayo ngayon ay tinatawag na iglesia, hindi yung edifice. Kaya it doesn't matter kung wala tayong church building. Yes, uh, sino bang hindi nangangarap magkaroon ng church building? Mayroon pang parking space. Wow, maganda yan. Pero ang una muna, tayo ang iglesia ng Panginoon. Tayo yung binago ng Diyos. Tayo yung mga mananampalataya na mula sa kadiliman tayo binago na ng Panginoon Hiso Kristo dahil sa Ebanghelyo. And so the Church of Jesus Christ here is not a mixed community of believers. Hindi ito composed of believers and unbelievers. No. It's not a mixed community of believers and unbelievers. Everyone in the New Covenant according to the writer of Hebrews sa teaching ng mga authors sa New Testament Everyone in the New Covenant community is regenerate. That's why ang bago kayo namin babautismuhan, hindi lang kakalabitin. Oh, gusto mo pa babautismo? Hindi. Mayroong interview. And the question, ang simple question lang. Hindi ko kayo, tin- namin kayo tinatanong ni Pastor Mike. Define to me what is justification. Mahirap yun. Kahit ako, mahirap i ija- ipapaliwanag mahaba pero sasabihin ko sa inyo para sa iyo sino si Jesus ikaw ba ay tagas masasabi mo pang mananampalataya ka na paano sa anong paraan pero pag sasabihin mo ah, kasi ako ay gumagawa ng mabuti hindi yung gospel 
Those are the implications of the gospel. Those are the effects of the gospel. But the first thing na ginawa ng Diyos sa inyo ay ako'y binago ng Diyos. Dahil sa Ebanghelyo. Ako'y sumampalataya. Ako'y sa makasalanan and I deserve His wrath. But because of the lavishness of God's grace, because of His mercy, He saved me. He cleansed me. Tayo ay binago ng Diyos. At yun yung definition ng gospel. Laging upward. Wala sa inward. Wala sa atin. Kundi laging doon sa, kumbaga sa, sa Latin ay extranos, outside of you. Not intranos, hindi inside of you. Kundi laging nasa labas. Dahil doon sa krus ni Jesus, kung saan siya nabayubay, namatay sa krus at muling nabuhay, doon natin nakikita ang pagliligtas ng Diyos. Pinagsama ang hustisya at yung pag-ibig ng Diyos. Yung kanyang habag at yung hustisya, yung kanyang pag-ibig ay pinagsama roon sa krus ni Jesus. Kaya doon sa krus, naroon yung justice ng Diyos. Kaya nung sinabi ni Kristo, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because on that moment when Christ hung on the cross, there you see the wrath of God was poured out on His Son, Jesus, because Siya'y lumagay sa katayuan ng mga makasalanan. Ibig sabihin, naroon yung hustisya ng Diyos But at the same time, naroon yung pag-ibig ng Diyos dahil sa ginawa ni Jesus, hindi na kailangan ikay mapako sa krus, kundi ikay dapat sumampalataya at tumugon sa nag-iisang tagapagligtas ng Diyos. Hindi ang relihiyon na makapagliligtas sa atin, hindi ang ating mga gawa, hindi ang sino mang tao sa mundo, kundi ang Panginoong Yesus lamang at yun ay sa pamagitan ng pananampalataya. So the object of faith is Jesus Christ. Hindi yung pananampalataya natin ang nagliligtas. Ang tawag niyan sa theology ay fideism, faith in faith. Para sinasabi mo, ang lakas ng aking pananampalataya kaya ako'y naligtas. No, hindi sa lakas ng iyong pananampalataya, kundi sa object ng iyong pananampalataya, which is the Lord Jesus. Kaya magiging saving lang yung faith mo if the object is Jesus. Kung si Kristo ang siyang object ng ating pananampalataya. And so, sa baptism, baptism is always the first step of the Christian life. This is now your announcement in declaration that now I am a follower of my Savior, my Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. And yan po ang makikita natin sa New Testament. And also here, the association of faith and baptism. In the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, it is clear that faith is assumed to be present when people are baptized. For example, sa Acts chapter 8, verses 35 to 36. Ito yung encounter ni Philip sa kay Yunuk nung ay nang Yunuk chapter 35 to 36 then 38 and 39 35 to 36 then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus 36 as they traveled along the road they came to some water and the Yunuk said look Here is water. What can stand in the way of my, of my being baptized? Verse 38. And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. 39. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again but went on his way rejoicing. See? Nung ang yunok nagbabasa doon sa Isaiah chapter 53, hindi na maunawaan, and yung kilos ng Holy Spirit, suddenly, 
naroon si Philip hindi na, wag mo isipin wag mong uh, wag kang mangarap na maging kagaya ka ni Philip yun ay ba, bihirang pagkilos ng bala na espiritu nung first century and ang purpose ay upang ipaliwanag so kailangan pang ipaliwanag ni Philip yung gospel anong ibig sabihin doon sa Isaiah 53 yung suffering servant si Kristo pala yun Siya pala yung namatay sa krus, siya pala yung Mesiyas, siya pala yung napako sa labas ng Jerusalem. At yung yunok, nung naunawaan niya, so anong ngayong hadlang, botismuhan mo na ako, mayroon tubig. Then the first step upang ikaw ay isang magiging, masasabi mong you are now, bisibihin ikaw ay handang sumunod sa ating Panginoong Isus, ay baptism at yun ang ginawa ng yunok. So here, when one is baptized, look at the the word, in or into the name of Jesus or Lord Jesus or Jesus Christ. Yun ang laging sinasabi rito. Hindi big sabihin na pagka sinasabing in the name of Jesus, yun po ay either summary na kung saan sila ay binautis one in the name of Jesus, meaning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Or in the name of the triune God. But pag sinasabing in the name of Jesus, yun yung representative. Na ibig sabihin, ikay nagpasakop na sa ating Panginoong Isus. Para bang sinasabi mo, in the name of Jesus Christ, I baptize you. Hindi masama yun. Pero dahil nga sa ibang teaching, halimbawa, oneness, hindi natin ginagawa. Dahil parang sinasabi, oh si uh, ngayon in the name of Jesus lang. So, hindi na kailangan the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But we understand na pag magbabaptize tayo, of course, naroon yung pangalan ng Diyos, Ama, Diyos, Anak, at Diyos, Espiritu. Pero rito yung si Luke, nung ito ay report, para bang uh, historia nitong si Luke, ito ay report niya, sabi niya, in the name of Jesus, Ibig sabihin siya, sila ay nagpasakop sa Panginoong Isus, sila ay kumilala kay Sokristo na siyang pangako ng Diyos, siya yung katuparan, siya yung Mesiyas, He is now exalted as Lord, sila ngayon ay nagpabautismo in the name of Jesus. So yan po ang gustong ipakita rito ni Luke. So here, furthermore, baptism it is described in Acts as preceded by the proclamation of the gospel. So, lagi nating ipinapahayag yung ebanghelyo ng ating Panginoong Kristo. And then, after na marinig nila yung gospel, sumampalataya sa Panginoong Isus, then, anong sinabi rito sa, for example, Acts chapter 2, 38 and 41, they were baptized, ah, uh, no, so verse 38, Acts chapter 2, those who, those who accepted this message were baptized nung nangaral si Peter tungkol sa ating Panginoong Isus and then they believed the message then they were baptized they were baptized both men and women sa Acts chapter 8 verse 12 and then sa conversion ni Paul sa Acts 9.18 Paul's conversion he got up and was baptized in Acts 16.14-15 One of those listening was a woman from the city of Tayatira named Lydia, a, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. Verse 15, when she and the members of her household were baptized. So, ibig sabihin sila ay nagpabautismo at maging sa within dun sa kanyang households. And then Acts 16.33 Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. So lahat ng mga tagasunod ng Panginoong Isokristo ay binautismuhan. Acts 18.8 And many of the Corinthians who heard Paul believed and were baptized. So lahat ng mga tagasunod, lahat ng mga mananampalataya na sumampalataya sa ating Panginoong Isokristo sila ay binautismuhan. For example, Galatians 3.27 So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith or, or, or all of you, you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves 
with Christ. So dito makikita natin yung pananampalataya and baptism. Tayo ay sumampalataya, kaya tayo ay binautismuhan. Sumampalataya sa ating Panginoong Hesus Kristo. At yan po ang makikita natin. Here when Paul does refer to baptism, he assumes that all believers are baptized. So lahat ng mga mananampalataya, sila ay binautismuhan na ng ating Panginoong Hesus. Galatians 3:26. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. And here it reminds us that the church is composed of the community of believers. Yan ang gustong bigang diin dito ni Pablo. Moreover, because of what Jesus has done, and ito na yung fulfillment ng New Covenant, the New Covenant community is the community of the Spirit. According to Romans 8:9, only those who have the Spirit of God belongs to God. That's why if we allow infant baptism, we allow and regenerate to be members of the church. The church is the community of the Spirit, not the flesh. So, ibig sabihin, ang iglesia ay yung mga taong Binago ng Diyos sa pamagitan ng banal na Espiritu. And the first gift of salvation is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit ang siyang kinakasangkapan ng Diyos upang buksan, maunawaan ng isang makasalanan ang kanyang kalagayan sa harapan ng Diyos at siya ay tutugon sa pamagitan ng pananampalataya. In other words here, the church is properly composed of those who are members of the new covenant. We are now members of the new covenant. According to Hebrews chapter 8 verses 8 to 13, ito yung katuparan sa sinabi ni Jeremiah sa Jeremiah 31 31 to 34, the time will come na papalitan niya, hindi, ito, hindi kagaya ng covenant sa lumang tipan o yung previous covenants. Dahil sa katuparan ng, new, ng previous covenants is the Lord Jesus. The culmination of the previous covenants, yung covenant with creation, Noahi covenant, Abrahamic, Davidic, and then the new covenant. And yun ang understanding exactly ng writer ng Hebrews sa verse 8 to 13. Basahin natin. Ito yung sinabi ng writer ng Hebrews sa verse 8 to 13. But God found fault with the people and said, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant. And I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after the time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God. And they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know, know the Lord. Because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. And look at verse 13. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. In other words, dumating na yung substance. Yung shadows, yung anino, yun ay pointing to the substance which is the Lord Jesus. And nang dumating na si Kristo as the substance, the reality of God's promise in the Old Testament now has fulfilled in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is now the new covenant. And ang kabilang lang sa new covenant ay yung mga re- regenerate people of God. Hindi to mixed community. 
Because everyone in the new covenant is regenerate. In other words, it's not a mixed entity like Israel of old, but is best viewed as a regenerate believing community, not a mixed group. Sa old covenant, may mga karamihan, mga hindi mananampalataya. As long as ikaw ay hudyo, kabilang sa lahi ni Abraham, by physical lineage, ikaw ay kabilang sa, new coven- sa old covenant. But here in the new covenant, only a believer, a regenerate person will be included in the new covenant sa ating Panginoong Yesus. So what the Old Testament promises and anticipates in regard to the newness of the nature of the church is what the New Testament announces is fulfilled in Christ. In other words, the new covenant is inaugurated and ratified by the sacrificial death of Christ. Dahil sa ginawa ng ating Panginoon Jesus, yan ang sinabi sa Luke chapter 22 verse 20, the new covenant, yung kanyang blood, yung kumbaga nung nag-institute si Christ ng the Lord's Supper, this is the new covenant. Mismo binanggit ng Panginoong Isus. And this is the reason why it is not correct to view the church as simply the replacement of Israel. A kind of renewed instantiation of it. Hindi to replacement lang ng bansang Israel. This is a completely new The church is new due to her identification with Christ, the, the head of the new creation. She, the church, is a new man. Yun ang description ni Paul sa Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. Tayo ay mga bago na. Tayo ay mga bagong nilikha. Tayo ay pinag-isa na ng Panginoong Isus. Napaganda rito sa Ephesians chapter 2 na binanggit ni Paul. Sabi niya, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and for foreigners to be to the covenants of the promise. Look at the plurality, the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. Yan ang description sa lahat ng tao sa mundo, without God, without hope and without God in the world. But look at the contrast. But now, in Christ Jesus, you once were far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Wala nang alitan, wala nang hudyo at gentiles sa iglesia ng Diyos. Na parabang mayroon pa rin barrier na sinasabi ng mga Hudyo kami ay mga special people of God. No! Dahil ang katuparan ngayon because Jesus Christ is the true Israel, He is the true vine, Siya ang nakasunod na hindi nasunod na bansang Israel, at ang totoong lahi ni Abraham ay kagaya ni Abraham na sumampalataya sa ating Painong Iso Kristo. Huwag kayo sumampalataya kay Iso Kristo kahit na ikaw hindi Hudyo, ikaw kabilang sa people of God. Ikay kabilang sa bagong tipanan ng ating Panginoong Kristo. In other words here, the church is new due to her identification with Christ, the head of the new creation. This is why the church is identified with the age to come, not with the structures of the old era or with what has been labeled this present age, meaning sa mundo na kung saan masama, kung saan tayo bumagsak na sa kasalanan. But the age to come, re- referring to the age of righteousness, forgiveness of sin, justification sa ginawa ng Panginoong Isus sa krus ng Kalbaryo and our union with Him. We are no longer identified with this age. Yes, we are in this age, meaning nandito tayo sa mundo na bumagsak na sa kasalanan. Because we are in this age, narito pa rin yung remaining depravity in us. Narito pa rin yung darling sin ng isang Kristiyano. But he is no longer characterized by sin. 
Dahil tayo binago na ng Diyos. Ang ating master ay ang ating Panginoong Isus because you cannot serve two masters. Ika nga, sabi ng ating Panginoong Isus. So meron ka lang isang master. At kung ang master mo si Isus, you are willing to submit to the will of your master in heaven. But if your master is your sin, you cannot do without it. Ibig sabihin, you are under the control of that sin. And I tell you, kaibigan, ikay magsisi. Ikay sumampalataya kay Jesus. Huwag mong sabihin ng iyong kasalanan as ngayon dahil nag enjoy ka at sinasabi mo na mas masaya ako sa kalagayan ito dahil yan ay pansamantala. Time will come na ikaw ay hatulan ng Diyos at ang sabi ng scripture forever and ever. Ang paghahatol ng Diyos ay walang hanggang kahatulan at ang Diyos ay nararapat lamang na hatulan tayo dahil tayo nagkasala laban sa Diyos. At kung ikaw ay hahatulan ng Diyos at naroon araw-gabi mararanasan mo ang kanyang puot, doon sa lugar na yun, walang pagsisisi, patuloy kang nagngangalit, patuloy kang nagagalit at walang pagsisisi. Ganyan ang description sa mga taong naroon sa hell. Ngunit sa isang mananampalataya, dahil iniisip niya na mas mainam na ako'y sumunod sa Panginoon na kahit na sa pangkasalukuyan ako'y maghihirap. Dahil mayroong hinaharap, ako ay makakapiling ko ang aking Panginoong Isus, ang aking tagapagligtas. Kaya anuman ang mayroon ngayon sa kasalukuyan, hindi ito ang pinakaimportante sa aking buhay kundi ang sumunod, ang magpasakop sa ating Panginoong Sokristo. Yun ang sabi ni Paul sa Philippians chapter 3. Lahat na napapabagal sa kanyang paglago, sa kanyang sanctification, ay kanyang siniset aside. Ano mang mga baggages. At ang sabi ni John Stott, sa inyo daw, sa iyo sa iyong journey, pagka marami kang dalang mga doon sa backpack mo, Marami kang nilalagay at aakyat ka ng Mount Everest. Anong mangyayari? Talagang hihingalin ka. So, anong gagawin mo? Tatanggalin mo yung nagpapabigat. Gusto mo na magaan. Huwag kayo isang atleta. Pag ikay tumatakbo, gusto mo na yung pinakamanipis. Hindi ka pwede magdadala ng mabigat na relos. O meron ka pang necklace. Lahat ng maaaring magpapabagal sa iyong pagtakbo. Tanggalin mo. And so sa description ng isang mananampalataya, lahat ng mga remaining sins, hilingin mo sa Diyos na tanggalin yan. Yan ang napapabagal sa ating paglago, sa ating buhay bilang mananampalataya. At hilingin natin sa Diyos na sana ilalago tayo sa Panginoon. Dahil pagsapit natin sa bagong langit at bagong lupa, wala kang dala maliban sa iyong tagapagligtas. Kumbaga, ang daladala mo lang certificate, are you a believer? Yes, I am. Dahil sa ginawa ng Panginoong Isus sa krus ng Kalbar, yun lang ang iyong re-represent. Hindi mo nire-represent ang iyong kayamanan. Hindi mo pwedeng re-represent ang iyong pagiging guwapo, ang pagiging maganda. Hindi mo nire-represent yung pagiging sikat o pagiging artista. Hindi mo nire-represent ang iyong makayamanan sa mundo. Dahil ang sabi ni Pablo, tayo sinilang sa mundo na walang dala, babalik ka rin, sa, ka rin sa alikabok na walang dala. At yan ang description ng isang mananampalataya. Kaya ano napapabagal sa iyong buhay, ikay magsisi at sumunod sa ating Panginoong Kristo. Bilang pangwakas mga kapatid, bilang reflection, ito naman ay question ko ngayon, sa mga dalawa nating babautismuhan sina Dr. Kim Obando and si Josie Naik because baptism organically linked with the gospel itself and all of the realities of the new covenant age and the benefits that come to us are because of our faith union with Christ so tandaan natin yan mga kapatid at sa ating mga babautismuhan dahil sa inyong identity or identification with Christ. So the question, who then should receive the covenant sign of baptism? 
Only those who profess to have experienced the realities it actually signifies. Yung baptism actually signifies people who have repented of their sins and believe in Christ and Him alone. Wala nang iba. Pagkalagyan mo ng plus, Christ plus, Christ plus, yun yung ginawa nung 16th century. Kaya sabi ng mga reformers, Christ alone equals salvation. So, in Christ and in and Him alone. In other words, faith here is assumed. At yan ang description ng isang mananampalataya. And based on your confession or profession of faith, this afternoon, babatismuhan namin kayo. And here, reflections and there are five but very quick first baptism identifies us with Christ yun yung text natin sa 28 verse 19 and two baptism does not save it announces salvation three baptism is an individual announcement fourth baptism is also a church announcement and fifth Baptism follows belief. Believers baptism defined as baptism following belief is the pattern for example in Corinth sa Acts 18:8 nating binasa kanina. So the gospel is preached, people believed and they are baptized. Hindi po natin gawing i kumbaga pagpalit-palitin. The gospel is preached People believe and they are baptized. In short, it is not baptism that saves. It is faith in Jesus Christ. And the five truths outlined above will be helpful to remind us of the importance of baptism. And may God give us great grace to see and apply these truths in our lives. Tayo manalangin. Kilang Diyos, kami po'y napapasalamat muli sa oras na ito. Salamat sa iyong salita at uh, sa paalala niyo sa amin, Panginoon, lalo na sa usapin ng baptism. Salamat sa karunungan na binigay niyo sa amin at naway ma-apply namin ito sa aming buhay at sa aming mga babautismuan this afternoon. Salamat sa kanilang buhay na tinawag nyo sila, Panginoon. Binago nyo sila dahil sa Ebanghelyo. Kaya pinupuri namin kayo, pinasasalamatan sa oras na ito, tinataas namin ang iyong pangalan at naway kayo ang siyang maluwalhati sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. So bago tayo, uh, bago kakanta si Ryan, pwedeng papuntahin natin tong dalawa, si Ate Josie at si Dr. Kim. And tatawagin ko si Pastor Mike para siya ay officially panalangin kayo And tatayo tayo bilang iglesia, samahan natin uh, si Pastor Mike And mag din kayo silently uh, So tawagin natin yung dalawa here in front para makita kayo So ito na yung una, public appearance And Pastor Mike will lead in prayer Sige, atin silang uh, ipanalangin. Aming uh, mapagpalang Diyos, salamat Panginoon sa inyong mensahe sa araw na ito na inyo pong uh, ginamit si Pastor Jay at nabigyan ng uh, linaw. Ano po ba ang baptism? Why do, you, do we baptize people? It is not because we just want to uh, add numbers to the church but precisely because if they have confessed Jesus to be Lord of their lives and indeed uh, they believe that He is Lord and Savior then indeed what follows is baptism in order that they may identify themselves with the crucified and risen Messiah and so this morning uh, this 
we are all witnesses to this fact that two of our uh, sisters are wanting to be baptized and looking forward to uh, to what lays ahead for them as now as they as they now become not just members of uh, Redeemer's Christian Church but of the family of God. Yes. Okay, so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for uh, Dr. Akim and Sister Josie. Thank you for their lives, and thank you, Lord God, for <clears throat> their coming out and uh, wanting to be baptized. And uh, some of us will become witnesses to this, that this is indeed one of the two uh, ordinances or sacraments that you have uh, given to the church to uh, fulfill. And so with this, we are witnesses of your grace and of your mercy upon these two souls who are coming forward to be baptized in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We pray for your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us now come to our offering and let us open our songbooks to page number 15. We shall sing, By This We Know Love.
by this we know love. Amen. Akin po tawagin si Bro Ron to pray our, for our offering. So bago tayo dadako sa ating uh, benediction, uh, gusto ko lang malaman kung meron mga magse-celebrate ng inyong karawan this coming week except Pastor Jay. Dalawa kasi birthday ni Pastor Jay, isang ano, April ba? O... December. <laughs> ah, December lang. December. <laughs> so meron po bang iba kasama ni Pastor Jay? Church anniversary din namin. Oh, church anniversary din. Ay, church anniversary. Wedding Ay, wedding anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> wedding anniversary. Sa 15. Uh, Sa 15 din? Uh, But, oh, so we are all invited. <laughs> okay. Sige, wala na. So ating panalangin si... Uh, uh, yes. Annabelle, dito ka na rin para may sama ka sa... Uh, Prayer kayong dalawa ni Pastor Jay. Dito na. Um, para special. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Ayan. So, yes. Okay. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O God, for uh, this couple. Thank you, Lord, for uh, Pastor Jay and uh, Sister Annabelle together with PJ and likewise the upcoming uh, baby. Uh, that, that will be part of their family. We thank you, Lord, for their lives and their testimonies and how uh, Pastor Jay has uh, led uh, this church, Redeemer's Christian Church, in the way we we do uh, church, the way we handle the Word, uh, how we have grown and mature in the Word. We thank you for his life. And now that he is celebrating his birthday, at the same time, the anniversary of their wedding, Indeed, this is a marvelous opportunity for us to be witnesses of this. Indeed, you, O oh God, are good and faithful and true and uh, continue to uh, bless them. Whatever they need, they will lack nothing because you will be their supplier. You will provide for all their needs and whatever uh, they need in terms of health uh, issues, Father God, we pray that you will likewise do the same. Also, we pray for your protection for Annabelle because she is working in the hospital and with her condition, we pray for uh, her and her baby to be well and protected, Father God. And likewise for Dr. Kim, who is also uh, dealing with COVID patients. So we thank you, Lord God, for your grace and mercy towards us as a family that we in Redeemer's Church now witness uh, your blessing, uh, Pastor Jay, with another year and uh, a baby that is on the way and likewise this family as a family that uh, continues to radiate the grace and the mercy of our lord jesus christ so lord may your blessing be upon them always in jesus name amen congratulations <clears throat> Okay, so it says in uh, Hebrews, verse 13, ah, chapter 13, verse 20 and following. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will 
And may he work in us what is pleasing in him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. Tawagin ko na po. Sino ba magpre-pray for the food, Brother Ed?